So good morning, everybody. Welcome back if you were here for the meditation and hi to you if you've just arrived. Never sure if people are going to arrive or come to the class right at the beginning so early in the morning, but it's lovely that you're here. So we're going to, um, actually the first thing I'd like to say is if you would like to have your videos on, um, that's absolutely fine. Um, it might be quite nice for me to be able to see you through parts of this practice, but there's no pressure to do so. And up until now, we haven't been doing that. Um, but I would like to start inviting people to be visually present if they want to. You are all muted. And then um, we're going to start the practice coming into a constructive rest position. And take a little bit of time to get comfortable here. I'm just going to turn my blow heater off. But by taking a little bit of time to get comfortable, I mean just noticing how close or far you feel your heels need to be in towards your buttocks in order to feel relaxed in the pelvis and the lower back and to make sure that your feet are parallel, you can walk your feet into each other just to click the ankles and then zigzag them out again. And come to a moment, simply feeling the body in this constructive rest position. Notice the points of contact with the floor. And you'll probably notice immediately how the body's feeling right now. Probably notice immediately the quality of your breath. Well, this is simply the job of noticing, noticing how you feel, what's here right now. And those of you who are here in the meditation practice may want to draw your intention from the meditation right into the quality of this practice right now. And those of you who weren't here, without thinking too much, just noticing if there's a, there's a desire for your practice. What do you need right now? What would you like to invite in? And then maybe take into your day, into your week, maybe even into your year. And then gently sliding your feet away. So extending your legs one by one. So the whole body is extended. And we're going to stay for a little bit longer, not doing very much. So do cover yourself in a blanket if you need to. And settling into the relationship between your body and the floor. And I'm going to read you couple of paragraphs from a book my daughter gave me for Christmas. It's a book called Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. Maybe some of you have it already. It's actually about fungi, but these paragraphs aren't specifically about fungi. He writes, a friend of mine, the philosopher and magician, David Abram, used to be the house magician at Alice's restaurant in Massachusetts. Every night he passed around the tables, 
Coins walked through his fingers, reappeared exactly where they shouldn't, disappeared again, divided in two, vanished into nothing. One evening, two customers returned to the restaurant shortly after leaving and pulled David aside, looking troubled. When they left the restaurant, they said the sky had appeared shockingly blue and the clouds large and vivid. Had he put something into their drinks? As the weeks went by, it continued to happen. Customers returned to say the traffic had seemed louder than it was before, the street lights brighter, the patterns on the sidewalk more fascinating, the rain more refreshing. The magic tricks were changing the way people experienced the world. David explained to me why he thought this happened. Our perceptions work in large by expectation. It takes less cognitive effort to make sense of the world using preconceived images updated with a small amount of new sensory information than to constantly form entirely new perceptions from scratch. It is our preconceptions that create the blind spots in which magicians do their work. By attrition, coin tricks loosen the grip of our expectations about the way hands and coins work. Eventually, they loosen the grip of our expectations on our perceptions more generally. On leaving the restaurant, the sky looked different because the diner saw the sky as it was there and then, rather than as they expected it to be. Tricked out of our expectations, we fall back on our senses. What's astonishing is the gulf between what we expect to find and what we find when we actually look. I'm going to repeat those last two sentences. Tricked out of our expectations, we fall back on our senses. What's astonishing is the gulf between what we expect to find and what we find when we actually look. And so the invitation in this practice, but really in the whole of this block, is to really look without expectation and to simply notice what's here in all its vividness, in all its surprise, in all its contradiction, perhaps. And right now, as you settle into your body, where do you go in your inner landscape? Where do you go in your inner landscape? Do you come to particular bodily sensations? Or maybe you come to the breath. Or maybe you come to thought or there's an emotion that's present for you right now. And you can welcome it all in as you simply witness what's here. And when you're ready, if you'd like to gently bend up your knees and bring your feet back into that position of a constructive rest. And allow your breath to begin to gently tilt the pelvis forwards. So you come to this gentle curve in the lumbar spine and allow your out breath to flatten your lower back onto the mat. So it's as if the pelvis is rocked with the breath. Or 
continue like this, what I'd like you to notice is not only how you feel in the lower back, the sacrum and the pelvis, but how the rest of your body responds from the feet all the way up to the back of your head, all the way down your arms into your fingertips. And there's absolutely no hurry. There's no prize here. Just simply noticing and maybe even enjoying this very sense your gentle rocking with the breath. And all the way through this practice, the, I'd like you to notice where movement is jerky, a bit glitchy, and where you feel a smooth stream of movement, like uninterrupted smoothness. And there's no judgment attached to either of these. It's simply noticing the quality. And then settling for a moment, settling. And we're gonna add some very subtle movements into this pelvic tilt. So I'd like you to bring your attention to your right foot, just feeling it on the mat. And again, allow the breath in to tilt the pelvis forwards. But this time, as you breathe out and you flatten your back against the floor, can you press your heel into the floor and lift your toes up? And as you breathe in and tilt the pelvis, take your foot down to the floor. And as you breathe out and flatten, lift your toes up. And take a few more. So we're simply inviting the toes, the foot, the ankle and the shin into what's already a subtle practice. And again, noticing what happens all the way up the body into your hip, but all the way up the torso as well. And we're going to continue like this, but with an additional movement so that as you exhale and lift your toes, you're going to turn the foot out to the right, a little bit of external rotation in the hip. And then as you inhale, you turn it back, foot comes down, tilt the pelvis forwards. As you exhale, you flatten your back, lift your toes, turn your foot out to the right. Take a few more like this. So we're inviting very subtle external rotation of the right hip into a movement that's initiated in the pelvis and also welcomes in the whole spine. And just take a couple more like that. We're not looking for, so you're not lifting, yeah, exactly, that's great. It's really lovely that I can see a couple of you. So the heel stays on the floor, lovely. Maybe take two more in your own time. And then resting. Just to feel the difference between the two sides of the body. Remembering this whole theme is about dropping expectation and really noticing what's here afresh, as if you've been reborn to the moment, which of course you have. And then allow the breath in to rock the pelvis forwards again 
And this time as you breathe out and you flatten your back, lift your left toes off the floor. And inhale, take your foot down. And continue like this with the left foot, just simply lifting the toes as you exhale, lovely. And we're just noticing the whole body in this very subtle movement. And when you're ready, you can externally rotate the foot at the end of the exhalation, noticing the left hip. Does it feel different to the right? Noticing the whole body. And not noticing where movement is smooth and movement is glitchy. I'm taking two more on this side, please. And when you've finished, simply resting and letting everything go. Drop the attention. You can see beautiful blue sky coming through Jane Wellbought, Jane's window. It's lovely, Jane. <laughs> Seems lighter than where I am, but it can't be really. Lovely. And then taking your right hand behind your head. And just resting the, the, the weight of your head in the hand. And listening carefully, you might want to watch me for the first one. As you breathe in, just draw your right elbow and your left knee towards each other. And as you breathe out and you release your head back down, slide the left leg straight, pushing through the heel. And as you breathe in, draw your right elbow and left knee towards each other, no strain. And as you breathe out, head comes back, push the left leg away. And continue to take these cross body movements. And it's not a workout, we're not in the gym. It's much, I'm much more interested in how you observe the quality of the movement, where you get caught up, where it's smooth. Lovely, so great for me to be able to see you actually. It's a really nice introduction to doing this. And take two more on this side. Lovely. And then resting before you take the movement to the other side. So you take your left hand behind your head Inhaling gently, drawing across the body, left elbow to right knee. And exhaling, head comes down, slide the right leg away. And keep going, there's a sense of maybe contracting and then lengthening. What do you notice as you do this movement? How's your breath? And can you take three more on this side, please? And when you've finished releasing your hands and coming back to a constructive rest, maybe hands on your belly.
and absorb the effects of a subtle practice today. I love the idea of us being magicians here. So removing that veil of expectation so we feel the body we notice the breath as we see the world around us as something quite unexpected and fresh. Can you please slide your right leg away? And then on an in-breath, again, rock the pelvis forwards. So you're having this little tilt in the lower back away from the mat. And as you exhale and flatten the back against the floor, lift the right leg up, doesn't have to come high. And as you inhale, release the leg down and rock the pelvis forwards. And as you exhale, flatten the back, lift the leg. And continue like this, again, noticing how the whole body responds. And I'd like to add a little bit like we did with the foot on the floor. When you exhale and lift the leg, turn the foot out. So you're externally rotating the hip as you lift the leg. And you know, I did this yesterday and then you internally rotate as you come down. And I found it very, very difficult to lift my leg at all just because of how I was feeling in my body. And it may be that you don't want to lift the leg or it only comes up a few millimeters Some people lifting and externally rotating is going to be a real effort, quite a strain. Some of you are lifting your leg very high. I wouldn't lift it so high. This is about really much more interested in the external rotation. And in fact, if it's slightly lower to the floor, you're probably using more muscle. So we're firing up the muscles around the glutes and the hips. And taking two more on the right side. Fantastic. So really isolating this little external and then internal rotation. And then keeping the right leg extended. Can you slide your right leg out to the right a little? So out to, towards the corner of your mat. And we're going to keep doing the same pelvic tilting. So we get this lovely ripple in the spine, but we're gonna introduce a little bit more movement in the right leg. So as you breathe in, you tilt the pelvis forwards. And as you breathe out, flatten your back, lift the right leg. And as you externally rotate it, draw it over to the left knee. And then back down again, as you breathe in. So you flatten the back on the exhale, lift the leg, opening the foot out to the right as you draw it over to the left knee. So there's quite a lot of stirring around here in the right hip socket where the head of the femur, the head of your thigh bone is stirring around in the acetabulum, which is the dish of the socket of your hip. Beautiful. So the people I can see are doing this beautifully. Don't feel again that you have to lift the leg too high. And the next time you come down, taking a brief rest, and we're going to do the same thing, but internally rotating the right hip. So you breathe in, tilt the pelvis forwards. Breathe out, flatten it, but this time as you lift your leg, turn the foot into the left and draw it over to the left leg and then back down again. So it's a little bit of turning inwards and simply noticing how this feels. And if you're anything like me, at the moment, the whole of the right side of my body has gone into some kind of 
really painful tightness. I've no idea why. And so doing this is quite excruciating, but it's also very interesting. It's quite therapeutic. I'm taking two more like this of the internal rotation. And then resting both feet down in a constructive rest. Noticing how you feel. So these types of practice are deceptive. They feel very minute, maybe quite simple, but they go very deep. And actually we're using a lot of effort, mental effort as well. So it's good to rest, good to absorb, rest and digest. And then please slide the left leg away. So to begin with, the left leg is just straight, if you remember. And we breathe in and tilt the pelvis forwards. Breathe out, flatten the back and lift the left leg. And continue for a few rounds, simply noticing how the body responds, how the body moves, where there's tension. Lovely. And it's likely you'll feel very different on this side. Might be smoother or it might be more glitchy. And then next time you come down, resting and taking the left leg out to the side so it comes out to the left. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, bring it back into straight. I forgot to add the external rotation. So let's continue, breathe in, tilt forwards. And as you breathe out and flatten your back, lift the leg, turn the foot out to the left. So we're just introducing a gentle external rotation. Take a few, take three of those. And for those of you here today, I think it might just be you, Karen, who are doing the foundation with me. This is the kind of attention we will also pay to detail as we isolate certain muscle groups. Oh, Angela, Angela, I do apologize. And it can be quite interesting to isolate these little movements before we then come into the bigger asana, the bigger poses. Lovely, then rest the left leg down and now take it out to the side. And we do those same movements. So we start with the external rotation. We inhale, tilt the pelvis forwards, exhale, lift the leg, opening it out and then drawing it inwards towards the right knee. It's almost like a little circle. And take a few like that external rotation, draw the leg over. But as you bring the leg back down, bring it back to neutral so you start fresh. Flatten the back foot goes out, lift the leg, draw it over to the right. Place it back down again, neutral. Take a, let's say take three more like that. With as much attention as you can to detail. And that does include the quality of your breath. Beautiful, everybody. And then when you've taken your third one, resting the leg just for a breath or two, and we'll introduce the internal rotation. So you rock the pelvis forwards on the inhale, exhale, flatten, lift the leg, turn the toe inwards and draw it over to the right knee. Back to neutral. Take a few. Can be quite a relief to internally rotate after all the external rotation.
Beautiful. Take three more full rounds. And when you've finished sliding both feet away and lying completely flat to absorb all the effects of the practice so far. Being completely alert and open and curious as to how your body now feels against the mat. Is there any difference from before? Is there an aliveness in certain parts of the body that wasn't there before or maybe the opposite? How does the floor feel as it rises up to meet the body? And is there a difference on right and left? Well, we could carry on doing that forever, but let's roll over now onto our bellies, please. And bring your hands underneath your forehead like a little pillow. And keeping your head on your hands, as you breathe in, lift your right leg up behind you, not too far. And as you breathe out, drop. We'll alternate, we'll alternate sides here. You can breathe and lift the left leg. Breathe out, drop. And continue for a few rounds. So we're opening out the front of the hips. And maybe you can feel your hip crests, these little bones that jut out at the front, pressing into the mat as you lift each leg. And I'm interested in you observing if there's any difference in the quality of sensation as you lift the right or the left leg. Because what we're really doing here is firing up our gluteal muscles. And it's very common that one glute is more lazy than the other. So you can continue doing exactly what you're doing but take your fingers to your gluteal muscles. So take your fingers into the center of your buttocks, basically. And this is just to observe what happens. Do you feel as you lift the right leg that the right buttock is all fired up? What happens with the left? So I definitely notice that I'm very lazy on the left, which means my right compensates which is probably why the right side of my body is tight. I wonder how it is for you. If you notice a la lazy side, maybe invite it into action. You're keeping your head on the floor. And just doing one more on each side. And you can slide your fingers underneath the fronts of your hips. So you might, depends how bony you are, but you might actually be squashed in the fingers by your front hip crest or not. You might have a nice cushion there, who knows. And do the same thing, lift the right leg and notice what happens with that front hip bone in the fingers and drop it. Lift the left leg. And as you do this for a few rounds, again, I'm interested in what you observe. Is there more weight pouring down through the right front hip than the left, for example, or maybe the other way around? Lovely. And then releasing both legs down. And this time, as you lift your right leg, can you lift your head and your chest off the floor? Your arms stay down. And drop. 
Lift your left leg, peel your head and your chest off the floor and drop. And keep alternating between the sides. Again, noticing the quality of movement. Is there a glitch or is it very smooth? Beautiful, fantastic everybody. Can you take one more on each side? And then when you finish lying flat, just for a few breaths. Allowing the whole body to settle. Amazing. I'm trying not to disturb yourself too much. Drawing your hands by your ribs to allow yourself to slide back into a child's pose. And you can choose where to take your arms. It might be nice to have them around the body. You might want something under your head. And allow yourself to really drop here with this flexion of your spine, this gentle curling in on yourself. Drop into the shoulders, the buttocks, the forehead, and breathe. Such a comforting pose. You feel the whole of the front of the body moving into itself and the back of your body opening gently. A few more breaths. And from here, meeting me in an all fours position. We'll come into some familiar cat cow movement, but with a lift of the leg. And something that is an interesting experiment to do with cat cow, just see how you get on with this, is imagine your neck starts right down in the center of your chest, like where your shoulder blades meet. So that the movement that comes in a cat cow is initiated much further down than you think. So you're not moving from the throat. You're moving right in the center of your chest. And on a breath in, you lift the right leg as you open your chest. And as you breathe out, knee comes down, come back to a neutral spine. Let's take a few like this, breathing in, open the chest and breathing out, knee comes down. And then we will add, open. And as you breathe out, draw your knee and your forehead towards each other. So we flex the spine as we open. And we, excuse me, we extend the spine as we open and we flex as we curl in. You take a few more like that, not straining, but just noticing what goes on with the spine and all the muscles up and down the body. And the next time you've lifted the right leg up behind you, externally rotate the foot there and drop the right foot beyond the left foot. Lovely. If your left foreleg swivels out behind you, that's fine. And then breathe and peel up the right arm. 
And listen carefully, you might want to watch me. It's a little bit complicated here. As you breathe out, you're gonna bring your right knee back again and you're gonna take the right arm over to the left, under the left arm. It's a little bit of a maneuver here. You breathe in, you peel open, take the right leg out. It's a little bit more challenging. Breathe out, coordinate the right knee in, thread the right arm through. Let's do three more like this. Bringing our upper body more into action here. And if it's too much for you to include the leg movement, just focus on the arm, that's more important. And we take one more. And this time, as you exhale and you thread the right arm through, can you stay down? And it may be you need to place a blanket or a cushion under your right shoulder and your head. And come up onto your left fingertips. They're about level with your eyes. So your left elbow is pointing upwards and push into the fingertips a bit, just so that you can really feel into that left shoulder blade. And it may be that you roll over the back of your head ever so slightly. And this may be where you want to stay. Or maybe you want to slide the left leg away, curling the toes under. So the knees lifted, the legs straight. And maybe you lift your left arm up now, feeling that left shoulder blade. And maybe you take the arm behind the back, reaching for the top of the right thigh. So we're getting into our thoracic spine a little bit here. Can you take three breaths, whichever version you're in? Lovely, I love what I can see. Got so much more rewarding for me to be able to see you. One more breath in and then gently take the left hand down by your face, drop the left knee. And on a breath in, let's open up one more time to the right and then drop the hand down. And we can just rest briefly in child's pose before we come to the other side. So when you're ready to join me on all fours, we do all of that again, but we lift the left leg. So on a breath in you, remember your neck starts right down in your chest. You lift the left leg as you open the chest. And exhale, drop the knee, neutral spine. Inhale, lift. Exhale. Inhale, lift. And then exhale, knee to nose. Don't strain. I'm much more interested in the fluidity of the movement in your spine. And the next time your left leg is up, inhale, externally rotate the foot and drop the foot down. Maybe swiveling the right foreleg a little bit behind you. And inhale, open up the left arm. And exhale, thread it through. Inhale, open up, left leg. This is great for the brain. Exhale, curling in. And if you find yourself discombobulated, that's great. Don't worry about it. Eventually your brain will catch up and come into smoother movement. Lovely. Let's do one more. 
And this time, as you thread through, you come to stay. Settling onto your left shoulder, side of your head. Up on your right fingertips. As you push a little and feel into that right shoulder blade. You either stay here or you slide the right leg away. Rolling over onto the back of your head slightly. Maybe you lift your right arm up. Maybe you slide it behind your back, reaching for the top of your left thigh. And you take a few breaths, really spinning the chest here. Don't hold the breath. Beautiful. One more breath in. And then breathing out your right hand by your face, your right knee down. And breathing and push yourself up open to the left one last time. And exhale, release and come into a brief pose of the child because we are going to come to standing up, believe it or not, right towards the end of the practice. Can you have a quick scan of your body? How do you feel from the head all the way down the shoulders, down the torso to your pelvis, all the way down to the tips of your toes? How's your breath? And then from here, when you're ready, we'll transition to standing via a downward dog. simply coming your way, curl your toes under. So we haven't come into downward dog, so this might feel quite stiff. You might like to take five breaths here to simply freestyle your way into a smoother experience or not. No hurry to straighten the legs. You can keep your knees bent. Really helps the spine, the tilt of the pelvis. And then looking between your hands, walk your feet and your hands towards each other. And take a moment to decompress the spine, just really flopping the upper body down over the lower body. It might feel really delicious to roll your shoulders up and around. And then reversing the direction of those rolls. And then when you're ready, rolling yourself up slowly, slowly, unfurling. Into your your head settles on the tip of your spine. Wonderful. And take a moment here to feel the body. Now the only points of contact are the soles of the feet. And notice how you feel. Notice how you feel in the hips, the legs, the shoulders. Notice if your feet are parallel. And then on a breath in, all we're going to do is lift our arms up as we lift our heels off the floor. Keep your eyes on one point. And then breathe out, come down. Slowly find the floor with your feet. And continue in your own time. Gentle lift. Gentle release down. And then next time you come up, <clears throat> see what it's like to stay up for a few breaths.
without judgment, without thinking you need to be still, be fine to come in and out. Can you take three more breaths? One more full breath in and then exhale, release yourself down very gently, arms by your sides. Okay, so we're just gonna play around with a bit of balancing, bringing together a little bit of what we've been doing with the hips and the legs and with the shoulders actually. So I'd like you to very simply Float your arms up as you lift your right knee and open it out to the side. And then as you exhale, bring the right foot down and your arms come down. So this is all we're gonna to do to begin with. Just a gentle coordination of the arms, external rotation of the right hip and bring it back down. So that might feel very smooth or it might feel very glitchy. It's absolutely glitchy for me. I've never had this feeling in my right side of the body before. It's very, very odd. It's a great teacher. And it may be that one of the times that you come up, you stay up for a few breaths. Smiling. Take a breath in. Now listen carefully as you breathe out, draw the right leg over the body and take the foot down to the floor. So you're pressing into your toes. And on a breath in, squeeze the shoulder blades together, open the palms out, and then wrap the left arm over the right for a little hug. And then let's open again, breathe in really bright in the chest and left arm over again for a hug. And breathe in open. And this time breathe out to stay in eagle arms. So you might stay with a hug or you might be able to wrap your forearms and hands around each other. So a little bit of a squeeze of the upper arms into each other. Now it's going to be up to you in Garudasana and Eagle Pose. You can keep your right toes on the floor or you might for this version want to lift the right foot off the floor and squeeze the top of your thighs together. You might even want to wrap that right foot behind the lower leg. I'm not getting there today. And take a few breaths to feel your way. You could roll the shoulders, lift the elbows and hands away from the face. You could sit down in your nest, eagle's nest. Breathe. As you come out, are you able to come out the way you came? Lift the right knee out, open the arms and float everything back down again. Take a moment to feel the body. So we kind of accelerated from very simple movements into very complex posture. So for today, just noticing when we do this class on Friday, they'll be much longer to draw out and we can take longer in our eagle pose, for example. I'm probably relieved we can't now. So let's take this to the left. Nice fixed gaze as you open your arms out and you lift your left knee out to the side and back down again. A few more rounds. Just noticing the quality of movement in that left hip socket. And the next time you come up, maybe you stay a few breaths. Smiling, breathing. So really strengthening the right ankle and foot, lower leg. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, draw the left leg across the body, 
placing your right foot down on the right. Lovely. You've got a little bit of a squeeze of the thighs. And then breathe and squeeze the shoulder blades, brighten the chest and breathe out right arm over the left. Give yourself a hug. And do that again, opening out wide and closing in. And opening out wide. And this time stay with your right arm over the left, either in a hug or in the full eagle arms. Lovely, lifting your shoulders and dropping them, elbows up and away. And come into stillness, your version of it. Maybe lift the left foot. Maybe slip it behind the right foreleg if that's right for you. Little squeeze of the top of the thighs together. What happens to you in this pose, physically, emotionally, mentally? When you come out of it, can you come out the way you came? Elegantly taking the left knee out and then closing the feet together arms by your sides. Take your hands to your belly. Maybe one to your chest and then close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Come into an awareness of your body and your breath now. The floor beneath your feet space around you. Maybe recalling your desire, your intention for this practice for your day. And you, as we come to the end of this practice, you have a choice of coming into a meditation seat or coming to lying flat on your backs. And it's, we've only got about three minutes with you, but of course you're welcome to stay as long as you like. Making sure you're warm enough. And because we've been doing quite a lot with the hips and the shoulders, take your arms and legs quite wide. Palms up, feet dropping out to the side. If you're lying down, of course, if you're sitting, just find an easy seat. And we're back where we started. Where do you go when you dive into your inner landscape? What do you find here? Are you drawn to an array of physical sensations or one particular? Are you drawn to quality of your breath now? Are you interested in the breath? Or are there thoughts and emotions that capture your attention right now? How does the floor feel as it comes up to meet you? And what is the atmosphere like in your room right now? I'm going to turn off the Zoom. I'm hoping that you'll take a longer rest and sending you all so much love and thank you very much for joining me. Hi Liz. <laughs>
Have a great day. See you soon.